following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be conducting a sea trial of the latest launch from Sea Race L class of luxury yachts, the L550 Fly. She comes equipped with everything Sea Ray has to put in its top model, and she's got the strength to build the cruise in less than ideal conditions. Let's start with a look at her operating stations and then get her underway. The flying bridge helm is mounted to port and a glass cockpit is facilitated by a pair of 16-inch multifunction displays. To the left are the depth gauge and autopilot controls. The trim tab controls are just below. To the right are the Rockford Fosgate stereo and the remote for the spotlight. The VHF is mounted above and to the left of the main screens. Further to port are the engine controls, the remote for the forward displays, and the joystick linking the main engines with the bow and stern thrusters. The single helm seat includes a flip-up bolster. The forward windscreen is mounted to a stainless steel frame, and not only is it optimized to serve as a grab rail all around the bridge, it's a new mounting system versus the old style that we used to see. The lower helm is mounted to starboard, and the glass cockpit theme is well executed. Twin Raymarine GS165 16-inch displays flank the center-mounted CAT engine display and the new I-70 digital depth gauge along with the twin heat and air conditioning vents. And Seabray put some thought into the display angle to minimize glare. Just below is convenient storage that includes the USB port and beverage holders are to both sides. Further below is the remote spotlight and push button switches that are lighted when activated. Then the latest V70 RS autopilot control and additional switches are to the right of the wheel. A sub panel to starboard has the trim tab controls right within reach of the digital engine controls, the remote module for the main displays, and then the joystick that again links the main engines with the bow and stern thrusters to provide full joystick maneuverability without the expensive pod drives. This is further enhanced by the opening side window allowing a full view of the starboard side while still being able to manipulate the joystick. The captain and observer get individual STID helm seats that include custom embroidery, padded lumbar supports, reclining seat backs, flip down armrests, and flip down footrests. And notice the pedestals are powder coated to match the interior coloring. Visibility is enhanced through the two-piece windshield, with each section measuring 4 feet 5 inches by 4 feet 8 inches, both with pantograph wipers with integrated washers plumbed to the ship's fresh water system. To port, there's storage for chart books, binoculars, and other convenience items. Now, let's get underway and see how she performs. The Sea Ray L550 Fly has a length overall of 56 feet 3 inches, a beam of 15 feet 7 inches, and a draft of 54 inches. We tested on a relatively calm day with an estimated test weight of 69,595 pounds. With the twin 850 horsepower CAT C 12.9 engines turning 30 by 33.5 5 bladed propellers, we reached a top speed of 30.3 knots at 2380 RPM. Best economic cruise came in at 2100 RPM and 25.2 knots. It was at that speed that the 63.2 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 0.4 nautical miles per gallon and a range of 208 nautical miles. It's also worth noting that she runs at 0.4 nautical miles per gallon at anything over planing speed, so it's easier to consider running her based on comfort in the prevailing conditions rather than concern over fuel. With deteriorating weather conditions in the forecast, we decided to hold off on our performance evaluation until we could see how she handles in less than ideal conditions. And as it turned out, it was the right decision. She got pushed around just a bit as we were coming out of our tight confines, but that was easily mitigated with the positive controllability that she has, so wind be damned. We were quite impressed with how she handled the seas, shrugging off the waves while staying stable and keeping her solid handling characteristics. She had a shippy feel to her in that her weight countered the seas quite well, and she showed no pounding at all as we drove through. Coming back into the marina, we got another chance to see how she handles around close confines again, and no surprise, she handled perfectly. We chose the cockpit joystick station concealed behind the seating as we made a simple side to approach, and even with the wind pushing us off, it was effortless. And just to up the ante a bit, I backed her down a long fairway against the crosswind to see how she'd fare, and the bow seemed a tad more responsive than the stern, so a few touches of the bow thruster to hold her off were all it took to keep her lined up until we were in, and then just some side stick brought us right alongside. Pretty as a picture. Now that we're back at the dock, let's look over some of her remaining operational features. The engine room is accessed from a hatch in the cockpit deck, and the space is orderly and well laid out with all areas and service points easily accessible. For fueling the L550 Fly, there are concealed fill stations located under the non-skid steps to the port and starboard boarding gates, so we can fuel regardless of what side the fuel dock is on. The ship's main breaker panel is just inside the salon door into starboard, 
This is where the Seakeeper gyro panel is, and moving forward, another gyro control will be added to the flybridge helm. But the rest of the panel seems to be lacking several, mm, make that a lot of switches. But there's a good reason for that. While there are buttons on the helm for quick access items, horn, bilge pumps, etc., most of the electrical interface is done by the touchscreen. So rather than designing panels, the mindset is transferred to designing graphics. Let's take a look. The home screen will always have static buttons to both sides with monitor lights across the bottom. The red button shows a low battery so we can touch it and see. We can control things like all the wipers together or individually. Otherwise, we can control climate which allows individual zones or control them all at once. And there's presets as well. And whatever you want to do takes no more than two button presses. Here we can turn on all our exterior lights, but notice that the two bridge lights remain off. Those need to be lit manually so as not to inadvertently blind the captain. And of course we can do the same thing with the interior lights. We can dial into individual rooms, and the single switches can be held to dim the lights. And again, notice the presets. Turn all the lights to 75%, 50%, set for romance, movie time, all with one press. Shades are another feature. Here we have control of the bridge skylight and sunshade. We can monitor all tanks and transfer fuel at the touch of a button. Most important is the systems monitor page. It gives a quick rundown of all the systems like bilge pumps, opening port lights, hydraulic swim platform. It's all about user-friendly interfaces and it's not just for this panel. It also connects to tablets for convenience anywhere on the boat. At the bow, the 32-inch rail height gives way to the vertically mounted anchor windlass in the center of the foredeck. The chain stopper is just ahead to take the load off the windlass when the anchor is deployed. The anchor extends out on a stainless steel anchor roller recessed into the tow rail. A hatch to the side provides access to the all-chain road and there's also a washdown spigot at this location. Full control switches are to the port side just behind the remote controlled spotlight. Rather than have the cleats on the deck, instead, heavy duty 12 inch cleats are just off to the sides in a small recess in the tow rail, eliminating the need for chocks to handle the lines. High end Kallenberg air horns are to the starboard side. At the stern, shore power cords are connected to cord reels and they retract into the bulwarks instead of the riser in the stairs like we usually see. This eliminates the tripping hazard of the stair mounted system. Over to the transom there's generous storage and notice how CRA makes it easy to organize the storage so well with dedicated space for most of the items we'll typically find here. Also notice how the hatch is surrounded by stainless steel and two stainless struts hold the hatch open. To both sides, more of the heavy duty 12 inch cleats and we're happy to see they're up high out of the trip zone. Along with the midship cleats, that makes four to each side and all the way across the stern are grab rails. It seems that with each new model, Sea Ray gets better and better at improving the breed. This latest L550 fly is yet another example of the quality that Sea Ray is capable of and what happens when as much thought goes into the layout and design as the actual build process itself. We end up with a Sea Ray that exemplifies the pride behind the brand. And that's my full sea trial of the new L550 fly from Sea Ray. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.